kit you score three goals away from home and ordinarily you'd expect to come away with all three points as it was in the end it was a very hard fought and worthy point that you came away with that was pleasing that's right it was I mean our last two away games obviously Rotherham as well you know scored three goals which is fantastic but you know conceding the three is not quite so great so on you know looking on the on the positive and I tend to do that glass half full um, you know scoring goals is, is not a problem if we can just tighten up a little bit which we're more than capable of doing, then suddenly these these fantastic, really hard-earned away points can become away wins, which suddenly will we'll really see you climb up the table then. So that's that's our target, that's our aim, and that's what we're striving for. And of course, with the games coming so thick and fast, it's difficult to have that time on the training pitch to work together in those kind of defensive shapes, or, or you don't use that as an excuse? No, it's not an excuse. No, we've, we've you know, I mean, we keeping clean sheets at home so there's no reason why we can't do it away from home it's more a, a mindset concentration and, and things like that really so it's an, it will get there it will take take a bit more time a bit of work but we're, we're continually striving to just improve every time we set foot on the pitch be it be it for a game or be it for a training session you know one of the things you know truth honesty and belief I, 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 I sort of hammer all the time as vital things that, that that make our identity a part of our identity as a, as a group as a football club and um, the belief was there right to the very final whistle and you know to get that penalty so late on and it took so long for it to actually be taken but um, you know and Ross was our allocated penalty taker as well but you know listen who could have a better replacement than Brian Brian Ruiz in such situations he's a he's the coolest calmest man in the stadium I think there seems to have been, as you say, there's a resilience that just wasn't there before. But that also comes from the confidence and the belief in getting those kind of results and grinding out results as well. It does, which is a very important part. I mean, I you know, I want everything and I, I am very demanding for the players and they know that. And I want the silky soccer and the, the scoring of goals and creating chances. But I want you know, I want clean sheets as well, which, you know, at home in the, in the league lately we've been getting. But need to tighten up certainly away from home um, but I want a whole lot and, and does that hurt you more being a former defender and it does but I mean there's you know there's a, a saying in football that the, the managers are when they become a manager the opposite of what they were like as a player now I used to edit and kick it but you know my teams play nice football sort of thing so but I want I do want I, I love a clean sheet as well and sometimes a scruffy horrible one nil win is is a brilliant one um, <clears throat> but I, I do want everything and I'm very demanding and, and you know I make no apologies for that. You faced Lee Clark once before in the league. He comes back tomorrow night obviously uh, with a different team but he's going to know what to expect from the Fulham under you. Yeah, well he will and it's, you know, it's, it is a different proposition I like to think from probably the first sort of seven games of the season but um, as one thing knowing what a team are likely to do and there's another thing being able to stop them you know I mean I, I we focus we pay a lot of attention to the opposition their strengths and weaknesses but my main focus is on is on my team and, and the weapons and the strengths that we've got and if you can accentuate them within the game then you know I, I believe we've got excellent players that can hurt anyone in this division is it harder to play a team at the bottom of the league because the expectation is much greater on you and the home fans are going to expect there to be a performance a little bit like the Bolton performance maybe yeah not not really I think it's I mean the the championship is so wide open and there's you know, every game's a pressure game and you know every game's winnable but every game if you're not if you're not on top form you know you, you're going to get turned over because teams are tough and it's, it's it's a grind it's hard work and you know we're under no illusions with it but also I I, I expect our boys to be on 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 blob every single game and I, I fancy us to win every every game you know whatever team I put out The home form as you've talked about has really improved how important is it to get that kind of fortress cottage back it's been lacking for a quite a long time now and, and to actually have that kind of resilience at home and to, to really get the results going there gives you such a fantastic platform to build on for the season No it does definitely I mean I, I you know I, I sort of I don't go on to the players about my time when I played for Fulham, but I remember fondly of it myself. And, you know, we certainly had that. And we, you know, we, we really fancied ourselves against anyone who came to Craven Cottage to play us. Um, and th those were brilliant days. And that's, you know, I think back and that's, that's the type of environment and 
the atmosphere that I want to create now within this group of players. And it's it's starting to come. It will take time and we're still building, but it's, it's, it's going in the right direction. And I don't want to preempt anything, but with two home games in succession, that's six points that will actually take Fulham into the top half of the table if the other results. Yeah, definitely, but it's, I mean, they're two very tough games and, you know, we're, I mean, I've not even given Huddersfield a thought on Saturday. Everything is, is focused um, 100% on, 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 on Blackpool on Wednesday and trying to trying to get the three points against them. We know it's going to be tough. Like I say, you know, Clarkey going in as a new manager, he's going to give them a big lift. Um, he's he had a game, he had a game with them on Saturday, sort of saw what, what they're all about and he'll he'll come here and especially coming back to his old club, yeah. somewhere he's loved, he's, he's going to want to do very, very well. And he'll be looking at this as a, as a game that he thinks they can win. So we're going to have to be on top form, like I say, but I don't see any reason why we can't be. And any injury updates for us? And obviously Ross will be missing. It's just one match suspension because of that second yellow card. But in terms of Fernando Amari Vieta, will he be able to feature? Fernando's back fully fit now. He's been in training for the last few days and has looked really, really sharp. So he'll be in contention, certainly. Um, I mean, the biggest injury story was, was young Jesse Oranen on, on Friday night. We were up at the hotel in Wigan. I went over to watch him play for Accrington. And um, he picked up a really nasty injury yeah. early on in the second half of that game. Um, I mean, the news from the surgeon is it's probably not as bad as first thought, but he's still going to, you know, he's looking at sort of three to four months out with his injury, which is a real blow for him, but he's, he's a strong lad and he'll, he'll get back. We wish you luck tomorrow night. Thank you very much.